Hi, Tom Stewart here with Clean Business Today. Got my partner, Liz Trotter. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well today. This is uh, Wednesday, uh, 325. Kind of feel, feel like what we need to get into. This is day X of the uh, coronavirus uh, smart business. We need the big calendar. <laughs> we need to go back and start, start uh, getting... Uh, Tally, and we'll we'll start keeping keeping up with that. Um, you know, like we've said before, there's a lot that, that that's happening, and it seems like uh, a week's worth of information, if not a month's worth of information, kind of comes at us in a 24 four hour cycle. Um, a lot of times, there's so much information, and we have a time hard time kind of sorting out what uh, what's real and what's happened and what we think's happened, but maybe hasn't quite happened yet. And um, I've seen a lot of information flying out, around out there on the presumption that a law has passed and the president has signed. Ah, tell what? it like it is. Okay. Let me tell it like it is, Liz. Let me tell it tell like, it, like it, is. it is, Tom. Thanks. Tell it like it is. Um, there has not been a $2 trillion stimulus package signed into law yet. Um, as of a few minutes ago, the Senate hasn't even signed off on it yet, even though uh, Mitch McConnell, the, uh, the... I was the, just waving at Bridget. Sorry, Tom. About 1.30 uh, this morning, Mitch McConnell told the president they had a handshake deal in the Senate. Now, stop and think about that for a minute. During this time of social distancing and elbow bumps and six feet, they have a handshake deal. This was 1.30 this morning on a uh, bill that they uh, agreed on to the Senate that was supposed to have been approved by now. They're still kind of wrangling with it a little bit. And everybody is like, well, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen today, but it hasn't yet. Once the Senate signs off on it, it, that bill has to go back to the House of Representatives where they have to approve it. But there's uh, Steny Hoyer, the uh, majority leader in the House, made it clear that there's a 24 hour waiting period that everybody in the House hasn't even seen the text of this bill yet. So they need to get the text and they've got 24 hours to read it before they vote on it. So the earliest it's going to happen is tomorrow afternoon going into evening. And that's presuming that the Senate can get their stuff together today. So. You know, is it going to happen? Wall Street thinks it is because on you know, the stock market, you know, went up again today by a material amount. You know, first two day uh, gain back to back in a long, long time. So uh, investors think it, think it's still solid, but um, the devil's in the details on some of this. So it's hard to speak about a lot of the details because they're still haggling over what those details are. And even after it's signed into law, presuming that it is, you're still have a rather thin document that it's not until uh, all the people that work in the bureaucracy write all the regulations that take a document that's maybe a dozen pages long and turn it into, you know, several thousand pages long when we know what's going on. Um, one interesting piece of information, though, that the uh, Federal Reserve is talking a little bit more about the monies that uh, they're going to be making available to small business and, uh, Bullard, the uh, the uh, governor out of St. Louis, a lot of a lot of red, a lot of, a lot of details. We don't need to get on the in, in the weeds on all that, but they're going to be working through banks basically because they want to get this money out quickly. And you know, there's you know, there's a lot of money coming, and that's good stuff for us. There's probably a lot of regulation that's going to be coming at us as employers that we're going to need to know as well. And some things are changing. And yesterday we were talking about uh, some of the changes in FMLA, Family Medical Medical Leave Act. And, you know, next week we're going to uh, be in an era where we have to pay people for that uh, FMLA before we'd have to give people to take time off unpaid and basically offer you know, make sure they would get their job back. And that was if you employed 50 or more people. If you're below that, you didn't even have to participate in that. But now, I guess it's our understanding, regardless of how big you are, you have to uh, participate in it unless you're able to get some exemption. And we don't even really understand what, what those rules might, might look like at the moment. And we told you yesterday that 
it went into effect April 2nd. Um, there's some information that came out today that says actually it's going to be April 1st. So if you're making some decisions on, you know, as an employer do, am I going to be laying people off? So I wouldn't have to fall under that and this and, and possibly have to pay this uh, FMLA and paid sick time too, for that matter. That's a, that's another, another variation of all of that. It looks like that you need to do that before April 1st, not April 2nd. And again, it's rapidly moving, but I'm telling you like it is. That's what we know now. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. Also, um, what I heard you say is we do need to make sure that we have um, decided what we're going to do by the end of March. So by the end of Tuesday, right? Because that's, Wednesday is April 1st. That's the best information best information we have um but it's you know it's changing day to day but uh i would go with that until we learn something different okay sounds good uh we got a few people on the on the live over here we got bridget as always hi bridget and we've got uh ruth natasha let's see ruth says fyi i am in new york where we and issa not exactly sure what you meant to write there, Ruth, but you, maybe if I read just a little bit more, I'll find out. Uh, Natasha says hi from Northern Virginia. And hi, Natasha. And let's see, Ruth also says, believe residential cleaning is an essential business. Just got a call from Attorney General who is telling us we are in violation of the pause plan. Um, okay, and so that's, that's interesting. We probably need a little bit more information about that, what that means, um, how how you, you know, how that's impacted you and what it exactly means for you. Um, um, yeah, I can share some information on that. Um, <laughs> take me it's just a second to find it. Hi, Krista. And Natasha, I'll, I'll, I won't um, miss your question. Don't worry about the um, FMLA less than 50. Mm -hmm. We'll hit that in a sec. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. This doesn't necessarily mean everybody in our government is going to agree with this, but this is a document that, that ISSA put together based on their research and, 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 and their legal interpretation of what's essential, they go through every state and tell you, is there an executive order defining, you know, what's essential or not? And if it is, what industries they deem to be essential the way they read the, uh, the regulation. And if I make it to New York, it's their as assessment that it is um, an essential service. I'm going to take the link to this document that I'm sharing here because it's really on the uh, ISSA ISSA's website. I just posted it in the uh, in the comments. Um, I don't know if that would be helpful or not, but you could take that and print it out or send it in an email or whatever to whatever authorities you're having this discussion with and saying, you're not making this up. Your industry trade association and their attorneys and their lobbyists are telling you that you are an essential service. I don't know if that's helpful or not, Ruth, but not worth a try for sure. Of course, uh, I'm going to go back to this for a second for whatever it's worth for every state that has an executive order, they're saying yes across the board for every state. There's not a no on this. So, you know, I came to, I came to conclusion the other day that it's really hard for us to be objective, to be unbiased in whatever our opinions are on such matters, because we have a vested interest in that answer being yes. So, and it doesn't mean that it's not yes. It very well, you know, should be or or, or, or could be. But 
it's kind of like betting against your favorite football team. You might know or have a good reason to believe that, you know, they're not the best team, but they're still your favorite football team. So our businesses are still our favorite team, so to speak. And regardless, it's going to be hard to, to, uh, to bet against them. You know, Tom, I was thinking about that. You said that earlier on another call. And I was thinking about that. And there are some businesses that were really hoping to be listed as non-essential um, because they thought that then they would have to close down and that everybody would be closing down and that that would be, you know, better for, better for everyone. So I'm not sure that I'm agreeing with your, your uh, point there that we kind of have our a thumb there. I mean, we might have it there, but not necessarily always toward the yes. Really? No, I think it could be either way. Run that by me again. Why would I want to be non-essential? So a couple business company, but a couple of businesses that I know of were waiting for their governors to come on and say, hey, it's lockdown and you're not essential because then they would be able to shut their businesses down without having to for a couple of weeks without having as many repercussions or um, feeling like they they were the bad guys um, that they could look like they were you know following an order where really they felt like they needed to shut down so I, I it would be it would be like, easier for them if the decision were made for them yeah yeah I get that. So I, I, I'm not sure that I'm buying your thumb on the scale thing, right? I mean, I think it kind of goes both ways there. Uh, but we do have a bunch of stuff over here, and I already missed one. Let me see if I can scroll up. I said I wouldn't miss this one. Natasha said, what was it? I didn't forget you, Natasha. All right, here we go. We don't have to pay our employees if we have less than 50, correct? <laughs> I'm guessing you don't mean that. <laughs> yes, you do have to pay them no matter how many you have. <laughs> I'm guessing that you meant FMLA. <laughs> that it doesn't apply to you. Uh, so um, I believe that what we said yesterday, I'm gonna say it, Tom, and you correct me. I believe that what I heard yesterday was everybody is still, it's including everybody from two to 500, but you can probably get an exemption if you are less than 25 employees. Is that accurate, Tom? Am I close? You just told it like it is. Um, you know, you know, it's, <laughs> it's unclear. It, 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 it very clearly states. And again, the regulations that actually define all the fine print hasn't been written yet. hasn't been shared. So we really don't know exactly, but in the law, which is just the general concept, it says that there are provisions for waivers and companies can apply for waivers. But what the criteria is and how you do that and how you get a waiver and therefore you're entitled to one or not, that hasn't even been written yet. So we don't know exactly what it is, but there are people that are speculating that if you're under 25, it shouldn't be that hard to get one. Again, FMLA now, um, you don't uh, qualify for that. You have to be over 50. So, um, you know, maybe it'll be 50 when it's over. <laughs> Just, just don't, don't know at the moment. This is another one of those areas where there just is not a cut and dried answer. We would all really like to hear yes or no, and this is another one of those where the, the, it's just not there yet. We're just not cut and dried. Uh, hey, Lisa. Hey, Natasha. Aaron, how do we advise our employees who are scared to work? All right. So that's a pretty big question. You want to hit it first, Tom? Because you know I can talk forever on this one. Yeah. Um, I guess the only 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 thing that 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 I would would would, would share is you know you have to ask yourself, was this the job that they they signed up for? Um, I was on a discussion yesterday and and uh, Don Finn, a friend of mine, he's an attorney that uh, does a lot of work with uh, small businesses made the point that if you're a first responder, if you work, you know, in, in, in the healthcare field, you know, this is part of your job description. There's sick people, you have to be there and you have to do it. And if you aren't, then basically you're, you're, you know, abandoning your job. It's insubordination in some ways. But if you're a residential cleaner, you know, putting yourself at risk 
to, to, to do work for people that, you know, there's some concern that there might be some infectious disease that uh, could be fatal. That's not part of your job description. And it was his assessment. If somebody says, I don't feel that safe, that we should accept that and not require them to do the work. But with that being said, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't specifically answer the question of, of what you tell them. What would you, what would you tell them, Liz? Um, okay, so first off, I have a little different situation. Um, and I'm talking about specifically for American Made and Olympia. Um, when we hire someone, we do kind of scare them a little bit. We tell them that you're going to be going into homes and people will potentially, um, um, you can guarantee that you will be going into some homes where there are germs and pathogens out there. We don't know what they are and some of these things could be dangerous. Just bottom line, we don't we don't know. But I promise you, you are going to encounter the flu virus and cold viruses and everything else. So we do tell people up front that they are going to be encountering things that are are, are dangerous, but that we think we have good processes in place to protect them during for that. All right. So how I would advise employees outside of that. How I would advise employees who are scared to work is by listening really, really well to what they're afraid about and making them believe that I'm paying really, really close attention and listening. So I, I mean, I would actually really listen without interrupting, without telling them that any of the, their fears are wrong or bad, especially if they're saying things that are just not accurate um, and listening. And then afterwards, telling them Asking, asking them if they'd like to hear another side and another position. And then I would maybe tell them another position of how, of how it's reasonable to have fear, right? This is a scary time. There's scary stuff going on, but they are in a unique position to be in a safer job by far. And they're also in a position to be able to help the, the, uh, the masses. That is if you're cleaning. If you're not cleaning, then I, I probably wouldn't say that. Um, but if you're going out and cleaning that, how they have a, a unique opportunity to be part of the solution and that sometimes when we're afraid, um, it's smart to go get away from whatever we're afraid of. And sometimes when we're afraid, it's smart to push past the fear and that I don't really know which one might be right for them in this situation, but that I'm happy to support them in whatever their decision was. That would be my message. So I'm, I don't know that that'll work for you, but that, that's what I would probably say. All right, let's see, I'm moving on here. Um, Ruth says that's the state order to cease operations if not essential, yep. Um, yeah, Tom, any numbers yet on how many states have a, um, either a stay at home or, I mean, I guess they have all sorts of, of terminology for some version of quarantining. Any idea about state, yeah. how many yet? Yeah. That's a that's a good question. I'll go back to this document here that that ISSA has on their website. And again, I, I put the link here in the, uh, in the comments, but if you look at this first column here, they, they refer to it as an executive order and every executive order is a little bit different in terms of essential businesses and non-essential businesses. But, but wrapped up in that is some form or fashion of just telling people, if you don't need to leave your home, don't, don't leave your home. And I haven't counted it, but the ones with the yeses here are, are states that have. So, uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. And Oklahoma, this is as of yesterday. That's the date. And I know that Oklahoma now has one in place. It looks I just like don't know. roughly half of them, I guess, maybe a little more, just, just eyeballing it. And I'm guessing more than that because I know that Oklahoma is. And didn't they just do something in Texas? I think I heard something about Texas. And I know local municipalities are as well. Like the state of South Carolina has not, but the uh, local mayors here in the Charleston area, there's 
several municipalities, cities all jammed up together here and they have separate mayors. They've all gotten together and have basically issued their own decree encouraging people to not essential uh, businesses to, to curtail operation and for people to stay at home. So we don't have an answer on that because again, uh, just like who says this, Ruth, uh, yeah, the wording is ambiguous. Uh, there are some, some states where the wording is more clear. Uh, in Washington state, we actually have the term residential cleaning doesn't get much clearer than that. So, or actually it might be residential service, but within the cleaning context. And so it doesn't really get a lot clearer than that. Um, but not all of them are like that. They're not on the, not clearly on the uh, essential or non-essential list. So uh, you're gonna have to make your own call for sure on, on some of these. Um, you can call people, um, you can ask, what I've also found is when you call the government to get some answers to these questions, um, that you're getting mixed answers. Uh, I, I know of two different answers that were given in the state of Colorado. So not really sure exactly how, how that whole thing is gonna play out either. Um, I think that you are going to have some plausible deniability in some of these areas just because so many people are interpreting cleaning as essential services. So take that as you will or not, not an attorney over here. Just a little cleaning lady, just a little maid, that's all. All right, let's see what we have up here. I know we had a bunch of more questions, they came in faster. Um, if I understand correctly, if the state hasn't placed an executive order on us, um, as essential or not, we should refer back to federal critical infrastructure, infrastructure list. That's my understanding. Is it yours too, Tom? Yes. Okay. Um, and Natasha, yes, we got that right. Yes, less than 25. She has 12 employees. Okay. Um, you do have to pay them unless you file for an exemption. All right. So Denise is giving a little bit more clarity on that, trying to tell it like it is. So you do have to pay them. Unless, and my guess is until, not just unless, but in until you file for that um, exemption. Um, Robin from the DOL, small businesses with fewer than 50 employees may, qual may, this was what Derek was pointing out yesterday, may qualify for exemption from the requirement to provide leave due to school closings or childcare unavailability if the leave requirements would jeopardize the viability of the business as a going concern. So that's also very subjective. And, you know, my, my concern is, or my concern and belief is in some cases, we're not going to know until we're there and we're filing for it and we're keeping our fingers crossed. And if we file for it and if we initially don't get it, what's the process for appeal? I mean, it, um, we just don't know what we don't know yet. Or is that, I mean, we, 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 we do know what we don't know. <laughs> we know a lot about what we don't know. We, know. we know that we don't know. That's what we know. That's about the only thing we know. Uh, Stephanie asked a good question. If I'm under 25 after layoffs, does that count? How's that going to play out? The presumption would be, yeah. I mean, assuming that being under 25 is a magic number to get an exemption because that's where you are at the time that that piece of legislation becomes law or becomes into effect. So it seems like yes is a good answer there. Oh, uh, my business. Unless, I mean, I haven't read it. I mean, because a lot of these details haven't worked out. Sometimes they have some type of callback or retroactive and is your head count as of some past. March 1st. So, I mean, that's been done. I've seen that. So, who, sorry. And who they were that? talking about doing that for something else. I can't even remember what it was, but going back to the first. 
Uh, okay, so Natasha wants to know, my business is open and they choose to stay home. So how do I need to pay them? Um, so if your business is open and you've required them to come to work and they don't, it sounds to me like they quit. Is that what you're saying? Um, that's kind of what it sounds like is that they quit unless do they have a reason to not come to work? Like if it's related to one of what is it? Three things, right? The, if the, they don't have daycare, if they're caring for a sick relative or does it have to be a relative or just somebody who's sick? I'm not sure how far removed they, they, they can be in their household. Maybe they're caring for That's something, somebody in their household. Yeah. I, I, again, I'm not, I'm not really sure. We don't have, you know, we're, we're not attorneys. We don't know every single detail of every single thing. We just know the, the bigger, broader strokes of what we've been reading, except for Tom does have some very specific stuff that he knows really well. <laughs> I don't have those things. Um, so I, I would say, and what was the third thing? If they're actually sick themselves. Yeah, if they're sick themselves and, and then they can't go to work. So in those cases, um, what do they do in those cases, Tom? She says, how do I know? Well, if, if, if assuming that this is April 1st or after, all things being equal, they're entitled for, 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 for compensation under the rules of the new uh, Sick Leave Act or paid FMLA, um, unless you're able to get an exemption. And we don't, you know, we kind of noodle that one around already. We don't know what, what qualifies and doesn't qualify for an exemption. Um, if they don't, you know, if, if they don't meet any one of those three criteria and they aren't coming to work, do you have to pay them? That gets a little messy too. If they say they aren't coming to work because they are afraid of getting, that they're being exposed into uh, a dangerous environment, um, Based on my understanding, I don't know if they're necessarily entitled to pay, but there probably be a bad idea to take any punitive measures against them. It would be, well, if you don't want to work, that's fine. You change your mind. You know where we are. But, and again, this is kind of stuff that we'll know more a week from now than, than, than we know now, but that would be my best, you know, guess as to, to what that would look like. So Robin, I think, is asking just a, a slight tweak on the same question. If they refuse to work when work is available and they don't report, like they don't report to work, I'm assuming is what he means, then they are terminating their position. Agree? So here's my thinking. Yes, they're terminating their position. They're forfeiting it. But the government might say that was per perfectly a reasonable thing for them to do. Here's the part that's going to be be sticky, and we're in uncharted waters here. We've used the term unprecedented event in the past, and we don't have anything in our lifetime that we can look back on and say, well, the last time this happened, this is the way it was handled. If somebody refused to do work and their justification for doing it is that, you know, hey, I'm a house cleaner and I've got a job description. And if my employer doesn't give me one, I can go to uh, the Department of Labor website and pull a generic one. And there's nothing on there about having to, you know, provide service in an environment where I am at a higher risk of contracting some type of deadly pathogen. And you can argue some of the finer points on that, but there's a concern that the legal system might side with that and you might not be justified in terminating somebody for that. Maybe you are. I mean, I'm not an attorney for goodness sakes. When you really get down to some of these questions, you need to talk to your attorney in your state and say, this is my situation. And a good attorney is going to walk you through that. A good attorney is going to say, I don't know either, but let me give you a couple of scenarios, several you know, possible scenarios that could play out. And one of them I suspect will be the scenario I just played for you. And at that point, 
you know, there, you need to be talking about well, what are the risks and what are the 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 the, the rationale for, for 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 taking some action and you know, you're 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 we're in a time when, when a lot of times we're picking between bad alternatives, and that, that, that can be one of those scenarios. Uh, let's see. Robin, self-terminate? Yeah. Again, Tom is speaking to that for sure. Um, Linda says, I thought what was said yesterday, under 25 is automatic exempt, but under 50, you have to file for exemption. Am I confused? I'm not sure where you heard that. I think you might be talking about town, the town hall call um, with ISSA. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure about that. And I don't think Tom is either. I remember hearing someone say that, but I don't remember if it was the expert or if it was somebody asking the question. So much information going around and around and around that um, the information I'm operating under right now is that under 50 is um, possibly exempt, um, possibly under 25, almost certainly, but either way, you're still going to have to uh, file for it. And nobody knows how to file for it. Nobody knows how you're going to get it at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Again, this is this is rapidly changing, and you know we're 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 trying to keep up with it the best we can. But it's my understanding that nobody is automatically exempt unless you have more than five hundred people. Yeah, yeah. Those are the only people. Um, and Karen says, lay them off and have them file unemployment. What do you think about that, Tom? Well. Every situation is 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 is, is different. Um, you know, and each state handles it differently. I mean, we've we've just gone through that exercise at uh, our branches and castle keepers, and we spent a good amount of time here over the last few days reaching out and and, and talking to our team members and finding out how it's going. And there's a whole lot of people that are being laid off right now and the states are like backlog processing the information. They send you to a website that's down more than it's up. Um, it's, it's not a, it's not a, a great and seamless solution that, that, that makes everybody feel good at the very least. And, in some regards, we're growing more and more concerned that what's supposed to be happening and what you would hope would happen, and I guess what we were led to believe would happen, isn't going to happen nearly as fast as as, as as what we wanted it to. And the other piece about that, Karen, is make sure that you're thinking about um, at the at the end of the month. You know, some of the stuff is going to change around the FMLA requirements. Etc. and uh, how that whole thing plays out. So, you know, there's a lot, there isn't just one answer. There isn't one quick, this is what everybody that has less than 25 employees should do, or everybody that has less than 50. There, that's, that's not the situation right now, unfortunately. And the bill that we, we talked about at the, at the beginning of the, the call, the beginning of the, um, this discussion, $2 trillion dollar bill, which is still a bill, um, has that was in your belt, like it is section it segment. Like it is um, has provisions in it as you know, currently written anyway. That has monies going to businesses in the form of loans, but if they can demonstrate they didn't fire anybody for some period of time, some part of that can be converted into a grant and alone is by definition some expectation you're going to be paying that back at some point in time where a grant is money that's given to you by the government that you never have to give back Free money. but the devil's in the details on all of that in terms of you know what percentage of those monies could be turned into grants and is it actually washing out everybody's salary a hundred percent and for what period of time and 
and what is keeping them fully employed, how many of them, what if people just leave for any other random reason and, you know. Or, again, or the number of hours they're working is diminished because the number of homes you're cleaning is less. Is that going to be considered not, you know, who knows? Are you still going to have to pay them their full wage, even if they're only working 12 hours a week? to be able to get that you know there's a lot of questions there too well, um, for the same thing it's kind of like what do we do you know what's the smart thing to do the smart business move during the coronavirus and without you know we're we're it's kind of like a card game where half the cards are flipped down and you're having to, to guess on what to do on only what little few cards you see and we won't really know until more of the cards are flipped over. I love that, Tom. You haven't used that one yet. That's a good one. I like it. I'm using that one. It is. It's right. Like, like playing poker. Yeah. You don't know until you see all the cards. And the other piece of it is this game might be one of those. And I don't know what it's like. Sometimes the people don't have to show all their cards, right? They can just say, Yoop. And you never get to see them. I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of that where we're just not going to see all the cards. We're going to have to be okay with that. Uh, Karen says that she has contractors. She was just relaying what others are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, Karen. Um, a lot of people are doing that. Uh, it's just one of those situations where make sure it's a good decision for you if that's what you decide to do and know all of the different things that it could potentially be um, impacting if you do that. All right, you see Steph's uh, comment here, Tom. Have you thought about our insurance rates after this? Um, hazard, hazardous duty pay? What do you, what do you think? Do you think they'll, we'll be seeing anything like this? I haven't thought about it, Steph. There's nothing happening here that's going to make our rates go down. There's absolutely <laughs> go down. <laughs> nothing here. And it's just a combination of stuff because the insurance market at the end of the day, it's all kind of lumped in together. And it's, you know, sometimes auto rates, you know, last couple of years, auto rates have been going up because the losses have been exceeding the, the premiums. But, you know, this is something that, that I learned uh, the other week as well, that private equity is putting money into law firms so they can like do class action lawsuits and stuff like this with the you know expectation that if they win money goes back to the private equity so basically the the the, the plaintiff's attorneys are don't have to you know in the past it was kind of like they'll take something on contingency and if they won they made money and if they didn't win then they basically lost money but they're being backed by private equity. So they win regardless, not in the hundred percent of cases, but this is something that's just kind of, kind of recently been happening. So the expectation is going to be a ton of litigation out there, a ton of lawsuits from, you know, the cruise ships to just all kinds of people about stuff that we've never even considered before because I, I was harmed. I suffered damages because of the coronavirus and somebody's gross negligence, fill in the blank. Um, and all of that at the end of the day is going to add up to the insurance companies that need higher premiums to cover those risks moving forward. Unless the government winds up giving them some, 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 some bailout too, which, you know, could happen. Could happen. Very well might be, you know, part of that $2 trillion bill. Who knows? Well, it started out at 4 trillion, didn't it? And they cut it in half. So maybe that's what they're keeping the other 2 trillion for. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Eloisa says, what about health insurance? Do you know if there is any information about this? I'm not exactly sure what the question is about. Do you know, Tom, do you have an idea what she might be asking? Um, I'm not aware of, of any thing in terms of, you know, this, this, this emergency legislation regarding the, the, the coronavirus in terms of changing the requirements as an employer in terms of, you know, what you need to do with, with health care benefits. I mean, um, the Affordable Care Act is still in place, and I don't think there's been any modifications to that. Not that I'm aware of. I, again, I don't know, but I haven't heard of anything. 
I haven't heard of anything either around health insurance at all. Uh, unemployment contribution rate will not go up in Pennsylvania due to virus. Yeah, not in Washington either. So, yay. I don't know about all the states, but I've heard that, uh, I've heard a lot of people saying a version of that about their state. No, that's interesting. I guess I've heard a couple of different interpretations of that. One of them is, your loss run as a company is not going to go up relative to the number of unemployed, but the aggregate pool, yeah, the aggregate yeah. pool, if it gets big, that's going to be borne by all companies. Yeah. It's almost so we're all going up. Yeah. You can, you can keep everybody fully employed and in some states yours is going to go up anyway, because everybody else got, you know, the other companies were laying off yeah. is my understanding. So this is another really good example, Tom, for your, your pithy remark of nothing that's happening here is going to make it go down. Mm -hmm. Right? There's not, there's not much good news in any of this as it pertains to insurance, as it pertains to risk from, from you know, litigation. There is good news on the back end of this in terms of how the world perceives cleaning and the value on it and the competitive forces. And I see a lot of opportunity once we make it through this initial storm, if you will. Um, we just got to get there from here. Uh, Eloisa is saying also that um, she's still working in Austin. She believes she fits into the sanitation of residences and buildings. That sounds reasonable to me as well. Of course, nobody's going to ask me if, it, it, if that um, uh, meets the standard of essential services, but sounds good to me. I, I would think that that is about as clear as you can get there. Tom, maybe we should put the uh, link to the um, letter that you might want to give to your employees saying that they're essential services. If you, um, if you're um, self-determining or if you believe the government is telling you that you are essential services, just because go ahead, Tom. No, you've got what you've got a great example of that, right, Liz? Yeah. Yeah. And when I can give it to you and you can put it in the links, um, sure. it's a, it's a, just a basic letter saying, Hey, um, this person works for this company that is essential services, and that's why they're out driving around. Um, the main thing that this letter does is gives your people a feeling of ease. It's not going to help them if they don't have a license, of course, right? I had somebody say, oh, well, this get my employee off the hook then because she doesn't have a license. <laughs> no, no, it won't. <laughs> She can't drive, <laughs> um, but but the letter will help them to feel more confident about driving around if they're nervous about being out and about with a stay-at-home order. Um, and I will send that over to you, Tom. Um, believing that we fit, yep. So we may be exempt, but we don't have enough info. And we could file for exemption, but there's not enough info on how. That's the latest info. <laughs> Sarah, yes. You, you should be in here with us because you speak, I don't know, better than almost anybody I've ever, uh, I've ever seen. Good job. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. Uh, at least so we wrote a letter to our employees to have with them. Yep, that's great. Uh, but if you have an example you want to send over, um, we can use your example maybe. Uh, somebody I know uh, gave them all letters, but then also printed on you know, those little business cards, card stack, a little card that said kind of the same thing that can keep them in the wallet. And it's like, okay, that's a good idea. I saw something. Ben Ferris had one of those. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Ben just doesn't like his name bandied about, so I was being careful. But Tom said it first. Right. I didn't. I might be wrong. <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You heard nothing. <laughs> uh, Bridget did hers today and also put her put it in her online chat channel. Awesome. Uh, yeah, send it on over. Eloisa, great. Uh, we were going to talk today. Our plan was to talk about some um, uh, communication uh, with uh, customers, whether or not you have um, stopped services for a couple of weeks or you haven't. 
you know, how, how are you moving forward and what kind of communications are you doing? We still have about nine minutes here, Tom, if you want to dive into that a little bit. I'll keep track of the questions over here. You probably get a good chunk done in nine minutes. You, let me see if I can come up with something. Anybody have any other questions while Tom digs this out for us? Or any other comments? Anything that you're doing really well that you're like, okay, this is this is working. Ah, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better. Anything that's making you feel like the water is below chin level, share that with us. That's that would be awesome. I know a lot of people are feeling like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not holding on. I'm drowning over here. Y'all hear this dinging on my phone every single time it dings? That's a that's a text message coming in from stressed out people right there. We can uh, post this as a uh, as a template in the um, Clean Business Today resource page. Coronavirus dash uh, resources. Um, Here's uh, just a email blast that, that, that we put together and sent uh, to all our clients late last week, letting them know that. Uh, oh, Tom. No, that's not what this is, Tom. It's not? Uh-uh. This says late last week. Yep, that's the wrong one. Sorry. I got too many. We'll share that one later. We got to get first things first, right? Yeah, get them in order. Sorry. Uh, what is your opinion about spending on marketing? So I can tell you what I've been hearing about marketing. I don't have the be all end all answer, of course. Um, if you are planning on staying in business and you are not planning on like a temporary temporary shutdown or anything along those lines, probably is in your best interest to put some money into marketing, but put it into marketing in the ways that are gonna work the best for you. Um, if some things aren't working, don't use them anymore. What I've been hearing, um, a lot of people are putting more of their money into like AdWords, trying to get some better pages up on their website. Um, um, I've heard that some, um, <sighs> sorry guys, uh, brochures, people have been doing brochures. I have no idea why those would work. None, but I heard somebody was having some good luck. So um dana says one of us should write a book on how to run a cleaning business during a pandemic after this start writing dana start yeah. writing today you're getting lots of good stuff everywhere right uh mm -hmm. i don't know how long it'll be until somebody's going to want that book again but <laughs> at least it'll be there ah ding 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 okay um all right tom go ahead share it with us is this the letter i hope so this looks like it Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, right, we so out late last right. week. Um, just letting our clients know that we're doing a you know temporary uh, temporary shutdown, suspend temporarily uh, suspended field services with the tech was the uh, the term that we we used, and we said that we we're going to take this two week period to you know assess the risks, and there's risks on both sides of this. Um, if we, if we continue to clean homes, there's risks that, you know, we could be exposing various parties to, to, to the spread of, of infection, unbeknownst, you know, a lot of asymptomatic people out there, at least the thinking is, you know, there's the, the, the body of science, I guess, you know, is, is kind of changing day to day on that too. Flip side of it is uh, there are a lot of people who uh, depend on us to provide our service. In some cases, you know, they don't really even have the other options that if we aren't providing the service, they're going to have to find another vendor to provide the service. And that vendor might not be somebody that has the training and the, uh, the expertise and the skills and, and equipment and so on and so forth to do it in a way that's uh, as good and responsible as, as we would. So, um, you know, and you go up and down the spectrum, you know, if it's, you know, we, we made the decision not to include in this things like uh, 
multifamily housing, common areas, uh, office space, commercial, that, that's anything that's being hardly used by a lot of people. We felt that the risk of those high touch areas not being cleaned and sanitized on a regular be basis um, exceeded the risk of, of us uh, continuing to work. And even after launching this, we've talked to, to a lot of our clients and we're getting a lot of stories that, you know, even though they're a residential client, they're in a situation where, you know, they feel that they need, need house cleaning services and they understand that, that, that we're the most qualified to do that for them and anything less than that, they feel that they're at more risk than if we didn't provide services for them. So we're in the process of sorting out here and taking this two week period to do it in terms of who should we be providing services to and maybe who would be, be better off and more comfortable if we uh, continued to uh, suspend services for, for a longer period of time. We, we just don't know. And we're looking for guidance from you know, our government officials as well. And that's kind of kind of sparse and, and, and kind of mixed. Um, our president, I guess, made a statement yesterday. He wants everybody back to work by Easter. So, you know, I'm... Oh, he just wants us in church. No, he wants us back to work, too. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think he wants us back to work the day after Easter, right? On yeah, Monday. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> and, you know that's not going to be a, 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 a driving factor in any decision we make, but it's just an example of, you know, all the things that, 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 that we need to consider, but we're, 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 we're talking to, to our, our staff or our team members on a, on a, on a, you know, daily or almost daily basis. And we're making a concerted effort to uh, reach out to, to our, our clients through, uh, multiple channels of communication, regular emails, as, as, as well as making some phone calls as well. And texting too, don't forget texting. Yes. Is working. Video is working too. And Tom pointed out something earlier um, that I, I wanted to just add a little tweak to. Uh, you know, if you're not cleaning for your customers because you want to, you know, want to help to flatten the curve and slow things down, um, that makes great sense. Of course, if everybody's doing it, it's going to go much faster. But if not everybody is doing it, then it kind of puts the cleaning company who is at a disadvantage, especially if there are customers that still want cleaning. And on the one hand, what if they hire somebody who is not as qualified and does not have the training to do the best job? That's not a, a good option. And on the other hand, what if they hire somebody who is, right? So again, maybe not the best option. On the one hand, bad for the community. On the other hand, bad for your company. So none of these decisions are easy, easy decisions. If they were, we'd all be doing the same thing. Uh, but they're tough. Got to keep saying the same thing I've been saying all along is day by day got to make these decisions day by day. Every day, you need to stop and think, what am I going to do today with the new information that I learned in the last 24 hours? And there has been some. <coughs> what am I doing? Did that cough sound dry? I don't know. <coughs> I'm fine. I got allergies, y'all. All right. Um, Tom, you have a couple of things to do is three o'clock housekeeping so oh, thanks tom thanks I'm gonna see if I take your temperature <laughs> <Right> here <coughs> my hand motions were not good for that but my forehead i should have done this it was better that's the way you do it yeah. right. um and so tom post for us if you would the Clean Business Today link. Yes. And, um, and the reason why we're posting this link every single day, you guys, is because every single day we're having one of these calls or one of these Facebook Lives. And so you might want to go back and see some of the other ones. Yeah. Bridget, I'm with you. I change my mind day by day, hour by hour. <laughs> right? I'm trying to not do that because it's too stressful for me. So I'll tell you what I'm doing. I don't think I've shared this with anybody yet, except for in my mastermind group. Um, 
uh, when I get, when I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is I go check a couple of, of sites that I have, three different sites, and I just, 10 minutes, I just think, what is the smart move for me and my company today? Do I need to make any changes? Do I need to pivot in any way? Now, what am I going to do to like support that decision? Just <laughs> what's the decision? <laughs> That's hard enough. And then, um, yeah, every day. So every day I'm doing that. And that it's usually making that decision sometime around six o'clock in the morning with whatever information came in overnight. So I hate waking up in the morning. It's like, what? That's what happened today, right? The, the $2 trillion thing, they signed in right over midnight. Who signed it in Senate, Tom? Well, they, they, or they, 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 they had a handshake. They had a handshake. Okay. And it still has it. Last I saw, they still haven't uh, passed it. Yes, yeah, still not. Okay, good. I'm glad you looked. Um, Sarah, it's so good to see you guys. Thanks for being support. Good to see you too, Sarah. Uh, Dana says, Tom, if I close for 30 days, should I not lay off my office manager? Should I just pay her out of pocket? She's the glue to my business, but I can't float that more than 30 days. Tough question. I can, I can tell you that the decision that we made at Castle Keepers was to keep our managers and, and leadership team, if you will, in place and on the payroll. Um, our ability to do that for a long period of time isn't there either. At the same time, there's going to be monies floating around out there for, for, for businesses. Uh, we've been talking about, you know, going to the SBA website and, and, and applying for um, a loan, and, and, and that's an option. Um, if you haven't talked to your bank, the people that you have your banking relationship with, that you do your, you know, checking accounts with and you do your deposits with, you really want to talk to them and explain your concerns and ask them what programs they have to provide some additional working capital for you through this thing. Now, borrowing money, well, this needs to, we probably need to make this a whole nother, another discussion. Borrowing money means the expectation is you're going to pay it back. So just because you borrow it, you need to make sure that you got a plan on what you're going to do with it and how you're going to get to the other side and how you're going to be able to pay it back. It can be dangerous if you don't do that. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes we, you know, it's not too hard to get in trouble with things like credit cards. And the next thing you know, you've maxed out your credit cards and you can't pay the interest. And well, the interest on these loans is, is relatively low, but nevertheless, you know, I don't want to just tell people just borrow a bunch of money and all your problems will go away. But that could be a way that you could 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 finance and keep you know some of these key people going a little bit while you're you're waiting to go to the other side. But well, Dana, there's no one answer for that. What do what do you think, Liz? I agree, Tom. No one answer. Um, I can tell you that I'm of the same camp as Tom. Though, if you've got somebody that you really don't want to take a chance of losing, I'm just going to keep my people working. Period. And so maybe they're they're still going to stay on the payroll and I'm going to, I'm going to work them. I will. I have plenty of work for people to do always. I will find work <laughs> for you to do because my plan is not to close permanently. And if I'm not closing permanently, I've got work for you. So I, I would not tell anybody else to put yourself into, you know, whatever indebted situation you might put yourself into. But for me, I, I'm keeping my my core people that I, I can't, in my mind, I guess I can't afford to lose them. So I will keep them. Hey, Rebecca, um, for the kind thoughts there. You, you guys are, 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 are welcome. Um, let me bounce over to Cleaning Business Today. Our website's cleaningbusinesstoday.com. Over here on the right, you can subscribe to our newsletter. I saw that one went out today. If uh, you didn't get it, you're you're not subscribed. Please, uh, please do that. That's the best way to stay up to date with all the work that we're doing. And there's a link that that we don't really have published on the site because we want this information to be available to you know the people who are, are helping us make these uh, Facebook lives relevant. 
but you guys know what it is. It's forward slash coronavirus dash downloads is what it is. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that again in the comments here. And uh, I'll take that Word document that I shared in terms of the uh, letter that uh, we sent out to, to our clients at Castle Keepers last week, letting them know that we're temporarily suspending services, that uh, you can use that as a template. It might be helpful. So, Tom, maybe tomorrow we should talk about ongoing communication, um, whether you're in business, whether you're not. We didn't really get a chance to talk too much about that. Maybe plan on that for tomorrow. Does that make good sense with what we know right now? Yeah. Not saying that will change you know, overnight. If something crazy happens in the next 24 hours, there might be something else that would deserve some discussion too, but let's 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 uh, let's let's make that the plan and see what happens over the next 24 hours sounds good tom for your tell it like it is section segment tomorrow it would be awesome if you could find out the nitty-gritty on this windex rumor that's been going around i uh, know just the person that can get us the real skinny on that we'll have that for you tomorrow awesome Thanks, everybody. Good seeing everybody on the call, and see y'all tomorrow. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.